Hey everybody, so this video turned into a little bit more. Um, I wanted to talk about a few different things. Um, one, the tab select. So tabbing into uh, specific routes of, in this case, we're gonna look at ducts, um, duct systems or HVAC systems. And then there's some Dynamo stuff we'll look at as well. So the selection class, we'll look at that and using that to return the active selection. So when you do tab into something, which uh, is not easy to do without, um, without being able to tab into it before you run a Dynamo script. So some of the options that we look at our selection is we can select model elements. We can select all sorts of different things. Model element, uh, select model elements. And so we can do it by category. There's a lot of different ways, but tabbing in and getting the active selection um, might be something you're, you're trying to do. In that case, I'll show you that, and that's really easy. And then saving the selection sets, I want to show, like, when you make the selection, saving it, and kind of talk about that a little bit, because I don't use uh, selection sets. I'd love to see how, if anybody else is using those, and um, I think they're actually called, like, selection filters or something, um, but we'll look at those. And then um, I'll actually show how to use those in view, view filters. And then we'll return the selection sets uh, in Dynamo. And that's this piece here. And actually see the elements um, all right here. There's two nodes, by the way. We'll look at them in a second. Uh, they're from Clockwork, but I had to use them. Um, or I had to copy them from their original nodes into Pyth a different Python nodes that are used in Python 3 and um, just to get it working. Now, I'm not sure if Clockwork has made updates to their packages or not, but it was pretty easy to do that. Uh, but I added a couple notes just so that you know where those are coming from. All right, so in here, and I thought this was really cool. It stood out to me because I built a script an automation where somebody would take a start duct or like uh, some sort of mechanical equipment and then an end element so start with a like a like this VAV here um, or this is a HRU so start with this and then end with this air terminal so they would in Dynamo make a selection for the first element and then the last element and what Dynamo would do is there's a Python script in there that would loop through and figure out the path. Um, what I could have done is maybe changed it to where they would just tab into it and then just click um, run and then the Dynamo script would do what it needs to and what's cool about this is by selecting the first element and then tabbing into the other one, it grabs that full path, it returns the full bucket. Now, unfortunately, even if we, you return those elements, they're not gonna be in order. The order of the, the way that they're ordered in the selection list, like when you return it, is based off of the element IDs. So you can see it starts from the least and then goes all, all the way up to the highest element ID. So that, that's how they're ordered in there. So you'll still have to go in and kind of reorder it if you were trying to do it um, some sort of calc or if you wanted the elements in order. If not, then no big deal. But I thought that was cool and potentially I could revisit that older automation and change the way I'm, I'm doing it. Now, it's fine for now, but I did think this was cool. And you could see like maybe for other things like pipes or just in general when you're trying to select different elements, it could be helpful just knowing about this. So you can see if we tab into it, it follows, it finds the route, which is really cool. So if I grab that and then go over here. So pretty basic, um, but something else I was kind of messing with was, okay, take those active selections and then save those. So uh, first I want to show you how to pull the active selection. So in Dynamo, we've got that right here. Uh, it's pretty easy. 
Uh, we're just using the UI doc dot selection dot get element IDs and then that's returning the element IDs and then this doc here so this is from document manager current document we're actually returning um, the actual element so we're passing in the IDs that we're getting from the selection and then getting the actual elements and then that's what we're returning in this Python script here um, So the get element IDs, you can see it's part of the selection class, so that's what we're using. Um, so it's pretty easy, it's not terribly complicated. There's a few other methods in there that you might find handy. Um, but that's returning that selection, and then this here is actually saving that as a selection set, or a selection filter element. And this is where it was more for fun to see what I could do uh, with these and I was starting to think of different ways to use them but I can't think of a lot of ways to use a selection set and just to show you one if we grab these elements here exclude that one um, you can save them right here. So you've got edit, you can edit an existing selection, you can load one, you can save uh, a new one. So we're gonna save one. I'm just gonna call this test six. Now, uh, if we go to the manage tab and then you'll see selections, we can load the one we just created and it's going to grab it. Now these are static and that's part of the reason why people don't use them. Also if you've used Navisworks there's rule based filters and then there's the static manual ones that you would do yourself. In this case that's what we just did. Um, but because it's static it's like it, you would only really use that in very one-off use cases. Because you can see here I've actually got one applied to this view. If we go to the visibility graphics we go to uh, filters you can see there's one applied to it and it's overriding the lines but um, when I removed the duct here and then remodeled it it doesn't do anything it doesn't uh, update it because because it's static and it's not part of that selection set but I was thinking like okay if nobody uses this maybe you could save a bunch of different selections that you could use in future automations uh, potentially uh, but again it's really I don't have a real good use case just yet so I'd love to hear from you guys if you're using selection sets or how you're using them if it's it is through Dynamo if it's th through something else whatever uh, I think it would be cool to hear um, so Anyways, that's selection sets. They're right there. You can, like I said, load them in. You can also modify uh, different ones. You can see here we've got the rule-based ones. If you edit those, that's going to take you to, to this, to your filter settings. And then uh, our selection filters are the static ones that we do ourselves. If you click edit for that, it wants you to add or remove elements. So there's that. Back in Dynamo, uh, we can return those, and so that's what this one's, this one here is doing. And this isn't very complicated. We just have a filter looking for the selection filter elements. That's what we're trying to find. We return those, and then we return the name of those elements along with the elements themselves so that's what this looks like here as the output and then I'm just indexing into that and getting the the selection filter elements and then this clockwork node uh, is returning the set of elements in each of those lists so you can see here we should have five and we do so um, I thought this was more for like like for fun it was cool to see how to use selection sets I wasn't sure if you could get access to them and save things to them but you can and it's very easy to do 
Now, how would you use that? I'm not sure. Uh, it's an interesting functionality, and possibly you could save certain things in there that you could use in a future, you know, future at some future point of the project. I'm just not sure what that looks like. But anyways, these scripts, if you want to, or these two temp different sets of nodes, if you want to check them out, uh, they'll be on my GitHub. Feel free to download them and use them. Let me know if you have any feedback. And uh, yeah, thanks for, for watching.